Hello and a very warm welcome to you from Jalan Besar Stadium. It's Super Saturday in the 2023 Singapore Cup and we are here for this third place playoff match between Tampanese Rovers and Brunei DPMM. This is the first of two matches that will be taking place here with the final between the defending champions Haugang United and the Lion City Sailors up next on the program. Coverage of that one starting from 7.30pm. Painful defeats for both these sides, resulting in the exits from the competition. Tampanese losing out to the Sailors and DPMM failing at the hands of Haugang. How will they be looking to bounce back from this fixture as they try to seal the bronze? Let's hear from the head coaches of both sides. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we all addressed it together. We, we, we knew that that wasn't the way we wanted to end our season. And, and today we have the opportunity to, to kind of finish the season with a win. And that's what we, we, were, uh, that's what we were intend to do. All right. Uh, you face a different challenge today in the form of DPMM. Uh, your recent meetings with DPMM have been closely contested affairs. How are you looking to approach this game? Yeah, again, every time we play against uh, DPMM, we need to watch out for their transitions, especially with Hakimi, uh, Azwan Ali and, and those guys. So they're very good on the break. So our ability to reduce transitions or prevent transitions from happening will be very important tonight. All right. <laughs> Lastly, three games in your last seven days for you and the players. How are the players and will we be seeing any changes to the lineup? No, it will be relatively the same. Just um, Milos is injured from a fracture and then... Um, Shah is suspended, so we have players coming in for them and then the rest will stay on. And again, we want to finish the, the season before win, so we're going out there with the same players. Well, we didn't, we didn't have a game for five weeks, so yeah. now we've got three games in a week. So, um, but we made some changes, um, we freshened up a little bit. Um, you know, it's a game that both teams don't really want. You know, third and fourth place is nothing really. Obviously, we've both been disappointed of losing the semi-final, obviously. Yeah. Um, but we're here and uh, we're going to give it a good go. Okay. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the fixture congestion in the recent week, right? Should we expect any changes to your lineup from the one put out on Wednesday? Well, to be honest, we have, we've had no fixture congestion in, the, in, in five weeks. We had nothing. Um, so, um, but we have now. So, yeah, we made four, four, four changes um, just to freshen up a little bit and give other people a chance. Um, obviously, this is my last game today for DPMM. Um, where I've decided I'm you know, going to leave today. So, it's my last game. So. Uh, the new coach coming in, if he's already been, well, I don't think he's been appointed yet, but he will look at this game, so it'll be important for, for my players. Um, you know, when, when the, the coach is, has been appointed, he will look at this game at some time, so it'll be an important game for them. Yeah. All right. Yep, coach, you mentioned on Wednesday that this is your final game in charge. What do you wish to see from the boys today? Um, I know what I'm going to get. I know what I'm going to get. They'll give me 100%. Um, win, lose, or draw, they will give me 100%, and that's all I ask for every single game. Individual errors, you can't help that. Um, but collectively, um, we play as a team, always play as a team. The boys always got a big heart. So, um, yes, yeah, we last game. So, a win would be lovely, obviously. A win would be nice. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll just see how the game goes. And um, let's hope that we're all smiling at the end of it. Adrian Pennock just there, sharing his thoughts ahead of this match. And before him, Gavin Lee, head coach of Tampanese Rovers. With me in the commentary position is Hide Kamis, former coach in the SPL, Singapore Premier League. Hide, it's a big day in the competition. You can't deny that both these sides would rather be playing in the main event <laughs> later on. But it wasn't to be, and they have to make the best of their situation. With that in mind, what can we expect from this fixture? Well, I think uh, you can see from both uh, coaches, like it's very emotional as well from for especially in DPM yeah, because uh, Adrian Penos is going to be leading out the team for his last game after like about four years four seasons with the club and I'm sure the players have created a lot of good memories with him over the years and would want him to get out or rather to go out with, with a good result of course they would rather be in the final but this is the best that they can do at this point of time and uh, I mean technically you are playing against a team who is very good on the ball in, in Tampanese and but at the same time you know, they are very very weak uh, in transitions that, that it shows especially against the Lions Sea Sailors uh, games as well so again you know it's emotional it's uh, versus tactical uh, today as well so I mean for the fans to wrap up the season, we hope, or rather I hope, that it's going to be really entertaining end-to-end, -end, a lot of chances, and uh, let's see goals at the end of the day. 
Adrian uh, Penock just announcing in that uh, pre-match interview that uh, this will be his last game in charge of Brunei DPMM. He was named head coach in October of 2018. This will be his 62nd match in charge of DPMM in Singapore football. Hide, what have you made of his contribution to, uh, to DPMM? I think if you take out the years of where he didn't manage to get any competition going with uh, COVID going on and all that, it's hard this season because they just gotten back into groove of things but once they did it took a long time but once they did they pretty much had a few good runs and especially in the cup their group stage was fantastic as well they they had qualifications early and uh, eventually they found themselves in this position now those are your match officials main referee clarence liao hongwei he'll be assisted by manoj kalwani and Mohammad rida saeed Fourth official, Jansen Fu. As your video assistant referee, Mohamed Hilmi Fuad. He will be assisted by Lim Kok Heng. Well, let's uh, see if we can have a look at the lineups. There we go. Two changes for Tampanese Rovers from their semi final exit. Yase Hanapi returns to the side to replace the suspended Shah Shahiran, who was sent off for two bookable offences against the Lion City Sailors. Adam Rifdi makes his first start in the competition and he replaces the injured Milos Zlatkovic. How do you expect them to set up here? I think uh, Irfan Naji might be slotting in back uh, at centre back, or maybe even Adam Rifdi can just slot in at where Zlatkovic was. But everything else should be the same. I think Yase going back to his normal position. Faris on the right side. Joel playing slightly on the left. For the, uh, and then tucking in whenever they are having the ball. But it's pretty much the same for Tampini Rose. Four changes for DPMM from their last cup game. Abdul Mui Sisa and Awanku Fakaradzi both come back in after missing out on the 11 last time. Shafiq Hilmi and Hirzi Zulfakar come into the lineup for their first starts in this competition. Aswan Saleh, Hendra Azam, Abdul Azizi Rahman, and Najib Tarif all have to settle for a place on the bench. As this, we have like uh, six defenders on paper for DP DPMM. It looks like they maybe they're going to play with. Uh, five at the back and uh, with Shafiq Hilmi, uh, Hanif Fahad and also Fahad no, Fashad No in the middle of the park with Hakimi Yazid up front. Uh, let's see what uh, Aiden Fennock has come up with uh, as a surprise in his last game of the season. I'm sure there's going to be a bit of changes here and there in terms of personnel and also positions. He does tend to have a little bit of fun in his uh, pre-match interviews as well as there when you've got the camera on the bench. He's looking cheerful, looking happy. His 13th match in the Singapore Cup for Adrian Pennock. His six wins, two draws and four defeats. And just one win against uh, Gavin Lee in the head-to-heads between both those coaches. Would Tampanese Rovers be the favourites for this one to take third place? If you look at form over the last uh, two, three games, I would think that uh, Tampanese Rover, Rovers would be favouring favoring over DPMM. But again with uh, the efficiency of how DPMM always sets up against a team like uh, Tampanese Rovers, uh, it's always, uh, there's always a chance for DPMM to score, especially with the defence of how uh, Tampanese Rovers is, has been set up all this while. Great music as well coming <laughs> through. The speakers here at Jalan Basa. Hopefully we have a, a game of football as well. And there's a third place playoff. I don't want to get your thoughts here. You've been in that position, having been a, a coach in the league where you're having to well, try and lift yourself and your team in, in those moments of disappointment. And we touched on the fact that you know these sides would have preferred to have been playing in the final, but it just wasn't to be. How do you then sort of lift those spirits coming into this one? Well, at the end of the day, you got to look at the brighter side of things every single time you have to make sure that you know you still have a third place to win I'm sure there's a bit of prize money there to win as well and uh, I mean you are a professional you look at your your position as a privilege and at the same time you don't get to be in these positions all the time you better be you rather be in this position rather than those clubs who have been knocked out of the competition so yeah, you got to look at many different angles and find uh, a way to tell them like okay come on let's play for this third place let's make sure that we end the season on a high and not be disappointed at the end of 90 minutes 
Oh, Tampanese Rovers going from uh, left to right on your screens, playing in the uh, purple. And black, there's Joel Chu. There's Glenn Quay. We cross. Martinez was there. Yase Hanapi. And uh, DPMM going from right to left on your screens, playing in uh, the colours that we're more used to seeing from Tampanese Rovers. The yellow and black. Adam Rufdi, Fanaji playing in a central defensive role this afternoon. Forrest. He took a contact there, Adam Rufdi. Rufdi is playing the advantage. Boris Kapitovic. Here's another look at that, Ide. I think he went through it, but uh, I think he, Adam Rudy, is lucky to just pull his feet up. It did look like he just uh, jumped yeah. over a challenge. You saw it coming. It was uh, Dolmui Sisa with the tackle. Very fun. Saifola. I expect to see lots of those rotations in positions, especially in those midfield areas, he did from Tampanese Rovers. Yeah, I think uh, you look at how they have been set up, and it's always a 3 2 when you are trying to build up with uh, Glenn Quick going up. So Faris Romley just miscontrolled that. Well, for a late nudge on uh, Abdul Mu Sisa from Saifullah. Well, Tampanese Rovers coming into this game off the back of a 6 3 defeat on aggregate to the Lion City Sailors. The first leg at our Tampanese Hub ended in a thrilling 3 all draw. Lots of drama and excitement in that showdown, with the expectation being that we would have more of that in the second leg as well, but it didn't quite pan out that way. It Tampanese are coming meekly to the Sailors. Came away with an excellent 3 0 win, and it could actually even have yeah. been more for yeah, the Lion City yeah, Sailors. Definitely. Especially in the first half, uh, Lion City Sailors was, uh, really, really had good chances in transitions. Had a lot of other opportunities as well to, to go even like maybe 4 or 5 up in the first half itself. I think Tampanese Rovers was really disappointing. Uh, the performance wasn't really up to what they could do. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's football. What do you think the issue was for Tampanese in that one? Because it's, it's a far cry from the display at uh, our Tampanese hub in the first leg. Oh, a bit of a mistake there from Nahumovsky. Giving it away as far as Ramley. So callous <laughs> in that situation, Nahumovsky. He's normally pretty steady in goal for DPMM. Well, you don't get a, that a lot from Nahumovsky. There's Nakamura, finds Yasser. Happened right in front of the referee. Allows play to continue. He says no foul. It's Yamashita with the interception. Nakamura splits the midfield with that pass into Yasser. Gets it back from Glen Quay. There's Joel Chu. Adam Rivdi. Joel Chu. There's Yasser. Tries to put a ball into the uh, six yard box. First time. Abdul Moyes was there with the block. A good interplay between these few players. Let's look at this replay again. I think there was a slight slip from uh, Nomowski in the end. Faris didn't manage to get anyone in, in the penalty box with his cross. Taken short. Joel Chu. Well, not a bad idea. Boris Kapitovic, it was with the final effort. Yeah, you can see he's worked in training before, understanding the timing of the players coming in for the pass, and at the end of the day, the end result coming from Boris Kapitovic scuffed the shot in the end. 
We didn't get the opportunity to uh, talk about Tampanese and their yeah, poor performance yeah. in that in that second leg. What do you think the problem was? I think uh, in terms of if you look at the the whole game, they were sluggish from the start. Uh, they didn't really they didn't really look sharp as a team. I think nobody did uh, really gave a, a good performance out of the whole 90 minutes. So maybe fatigue came into play after a thrilling 3-3 draw. Uh, it could be that as well. And uh, I think tactically, they couldn't manage how uh, LCS was uh, efficient in how their transitions were going, going forward. And they had a few chances in the first half, didn't really learn through it or didn't manage that mistakes. And uh, I think their frustrations bore through the game, great card, and eventually couldn't even get any uh, chances on goal as well. Hakimi just uh, going down under that challenge from Shuya Yamashita. Uh, DPMM uh, breezed through the group stage undefeated, went through top of their group, three wins and a draw from their first four matches in the competition and suffered back-to-back -back defeats against Hao Gang. Both legs of the semi-final, they looked subdued and really lacking in ideas from both legs. Hao Gang going through pretty easily in the end. They are really missing Voronkov and Aswan Ali, DPM Emande. I think those are the two players, the key players in, in the centre as well. Aswan Ali, a lot of uh, crafty ideas and movements coming from him and Voronkov. That's the chief striker for the last four seasons. Uh, Saifula. Well, it opened up for him. He's trying to drive it towards that far post. Now Moski saw it all the way through. I think a tame effort from Saifula in the end. He didn't have a lot of movement up front had space in front of him, decided to go for that shot, to take that shot. It's too easy for Nomovsky. Well, Tampanese and DPMM are meeting in this year's Singapore Cup for the second time. Both were in the same group. Tampanese finishing second. Three points behind DPMM. The last time they played each other, DPMM came away with a 1-0 win thanks to Farshad Noor's goal from the penalty spot. There's Martinez. Faris. Saifola. Yasser. Nice composure shown by Yasser Hanapi. Nakamura gets it back from Irfan. On to Saifola. Japanese seeing a lot of the ball early on. Nice interplay there. Faris gets on the end of it. Looks for the cutback into Kapitovic. And that's the opener for Tampanese. Their DPMM defense sliced apart. I think that's the word, Roshan. Sliced apart by good interplay, good movement, good timing. And uh, look at that cross from Faris Ramli, just slicing it through. Look at here, Adam Rivdi, first pass. One touch forward, all one touch up until the end of the goal. Fantastic play on the right side between these Tampanese players. You look at the defending of uh, DPMM, allowed Boris to be at the six yard area. And was it Hanif Amir there? A good start for Tampanese Rovers. That was his uh, fourth goal of the Singapore Cup campaign. Boris Kapitovic. You hear the uh, music that comes on after Tampanese score. You notice it's uh, lyrics black and yellow. Normally they're colours, but uh, you wonder if they're going to have to just uh, assess that for next season or going forward with the uh, purple kits that they have on. I think these kids were specifically made for the Singapore Cup, I think. Some rumours that yeah. uh, potentially they might be changing colours oh, going okay. forward as well. We'll have to wait and see what happens in that department. That's going to be a huge thing and there have been 
black and yellow since uh, since the beginning. Yeah, since the beginning, 1996. Yes, sir. That's a clearance from Martinez. It's too much Oof. on that pass forward for Hakimi. Right idea though, trying to catch Tampanis out on the break. Yeah, I think that's what they have been trying to do, or they have set out to do, especially against Tampanis. Worked out well a few games before, and I'm sure it's, they are trying to look at that uh, situation or that uh, strategy all over the 90 minutes. As far as. Some really good work down this right hand side of Tampanese Rovers. Looking to play very well. Also, we'll the sort of switch this time, Saifula, out to Glen Quay. There's Irfan. Saifula. It looks to be running the game in midfield, Saifula, but seeing a lot of the ball. That's a waste from. Kyoga Nakamura, not something we see too often from him in possession. I think uh, his uh, role this season has changed quite a bit. Uh, we, we saw him in Albrecht moving forward, roaming forward a lot more and when he went to Tampines Rovers, I think he found himself to be going <laughs> further down and uh, trying to dictate play from where he is as a defensive midfielder rather than roaming forward and I think uh, his influence in the game is not through the goals or assists anymore at this point of time it's about you know controlling the game, retaining the tempo and managing situations from the number six position Zawanku Fakaradzi gets into the area Len Kuei is able to match him stride for stride, gets himself back it's good defending Good work by Glenn Quay, just tracking back, standing in, in front of Awanku, not allowing the cross to be made. And in the end, the uh, ricochet went, round, went out for a goal kick. I made a big arrow and playing out from the back in that first leg against the Lion City Sailors. Anu, one of the Sailors, taking the uh, ball away from Shah Shahiran. It was a big mistake. I think they just took the lead uh, prior to that and allowed uh, LCS to be coming back to the game. Uh, Yase was there again in the area. This time on the end of that pass from Faris Ramli. Coming together there between uh, Yase and uh, Naumovsky. A pass through here by Faris Ramli. Was it uh, an elbow? Let's look again. In the replay. Just uh, coming together of the two players. Momentum perhaps. Couldn't quite see whether there yeah, was actually an yeah. arm thrown into the head of uh, Naumovsky there. Yeah, Faris was able to sort of find the yeah, angle yeah. with that pass. It was pretty incredible. I think this is what... Uh, Fullbacks need to be really wary of. Uh, you can give him a little bit of space because he likes to run into uh, run to that space and take you on. But at the same time, you have to make sure that you don't allow any crosses or passes to be played through. A oh, nice T-shirt. There, five years of the Yellow Knights. Congratulations to them from 2019 to 2023. Japanese Rovers Supporters Club, the Yellow Knights. Oh, it's good value. You know, Boris Kopitovic is uh, a big fan of the <laughs> Yellow Knights, always enjoys their support. I think there were a few instances where whenever he has scored those goals, he would just run and you yeah. know, congratulate or hug those uh, fans, show their, his appreciation. They, they, they make a big difference yeah. to the players, yeah, don't they? Yeah, I sure. mean, no matter how many they are, they are there and they're there to support the team and it's not just the yellow knights you see it across yeah. the league with some of the other teams as well you've and got the holes for how oh yeah, for example yeah, the, the crew the for crew, the Lion city yeah. sailors Geelang International, I forgot that's right <laughs> i think it's ultras eagles if I i'm ultra not mistaken eagles, yeah ultra eagles 
I guarantee you that the players and the coaches absolutely appreciate that support. There's Nakamura to Glenn Quay. And I, I have to uh, apologize if we've missed out on any other fan clubs. It's not a matter of uh, disrespect. <laughs> absolutely not. All of you are. Uh, I'm sure the the uh, Elbrecht have their their supporters groups as well. The supporters group as well. Now, well, well, you were uh, commentating on the game. I was like, thinking, is there anyone else? That we yeah, have yeah, there there are few. There are few. Yeah. I know. I think Tanjung Paga have theirs as well. Jaguar Force, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to see all this. Swan fans. Army. <laughs> Swan <for> Elbrecht Nikata. <laughs> well, come back to the action on the pitch, Glenn Quay. Gonna set it up easily for Forrest Romley with that tap in. Last ditch defending from uh, DPMM. That's it, Napi. Well done, Reef D. Tampere is looking to just recycle possession, looking to get back into shape and finding that opportunity going forward. There's Yura Indraputra. Mane Famer. He's having to try and find a way out here, DPMM. They've done nothing in the 18 minutes, just under 18 minutes of action we've seen so far. Nothing going forward. It's been all Tampanese Rovers. Yeah, it's difficult for them tactically now. You look, uh, they don't have Varonkov who can hold on to the ball, wait for support, and, and wait for the runs behind from you know, Hakimi Yazid or the, the, the wing backs. Every time you play to Hakimi, you know, he's not somebody who likes to be holding off defenders with his frame and size. So he's looking for that, that, that ball over the defense for him to run into the channels. It's Joel Chu. Uh, looking very uh, comfortable in possession, our Tampanese. Lots of time and space on the ball. Nice pass from Nakamura into Yasser. He's very clever, Yasser Anapi, with how he links the play in those spaces in behind the opposition midfield. There's Nakamura. He was on that driving run. Well, talking about Yasi, I think he loves to be in that position where the moment he gets on a half turn, he's always facing uh, Boris or any other player that's coming in. Big mistake by Yura Indraputra, just giving the ball away to Glenn Quay. I think Glenn Quay might be half a second too late to play that pass. And I think uh, he had another option with Boris with the cutback as well. I don't think there's ever been any doubt about Yasir Hanapi and the quality yeah, he yeah. possesses. But he needs to be on the field. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's been the issue. It's that disciplinary record yeah. with the uh, cards that he's picked up. But he started off as a, as a winger, yeah. right? That, he, with his speed and his uh, penetrative runs behind. I think eventually as he got older, he understood how to play in, in a more central position. To be in, yeah, look at this position here to be at that pockets of space and to link up play with his uh, teammates up front. Uh, Hanif under pressure just has to put that out for a throw in. Yeah, all over DPMM here, Tampanis. Well, it looks like a training match here with Tampanis uh, spending maybe the whole 20 minutes in uh, DPMM's half. And Hakimi's done very well there. Just to spin away from uh, Irfan. You spoke earlier about Voronkov. DPMM missing that physical presence. Yeah. Hakimi showing uh, that he's able to do it in spells. <laughs> in spells, yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I mean, against Irfan Najib, who is uh, not 
maybe you would physically intimidating as maybe Shuya, it will be easier. So they should look at that situation to where try to play out to where uh, Irfan Najib is rather than to where Shuya is. And every time if it's Shuya, just try to play behind him for Hakimi to run into. He is Hakimi Yazid though, that special sort of player who can make something happen yeah. from nothing with his quality. We've seen it on a number of occasions this year in the league. And the early stages of the cup. The DPMM needs to spend more time in the in the opponent's half, in Tabernacle's half, to create something. I think all these balls are more hopeful rather than you know planned. It's difficult for Hakimi or even anyone to create something out of these situations. It's always been very close and competitive between these sides, especially this year. Two wins in the SPL for Tampanis, 2-0 and a 1-0, and a 2 all draw in their final league match with DPMM. And then picked up the win in their Singapore Cup group match. But the last time DPMM defeated Tampanis in back-to-back -back matches in a single calendar year was back in 2016. DPMM winning a League Cup match 2-1, and then the following league match 1-0 that year. Nakamura. Again, allowed to just uh, progress with the ball. Right through the middle. Now to Faris from Kyoga Nakamura. Daniel Martinez with the clearance. Adam Rivdi. Nakamura, again time and space to receive and turn. Try to thread it through to Forrest Ramley. Honey Famir there on the uh, cover. They're going to have to be working incredibly hard, this DPMM backline. They're not getting any help in front yeah, of them. Exactly. It's still easy for, for look at where, how much space uh, Nakamura had just to thread the ball through. Honey Famir now using his experience and his strength as well to just screen the ball away from but it's Rami, but look at the amount of space that is being given and afforded to Japanese players. Uh, they are not being compact, they are not defending as a group, both uh, defending in, in, in midfield, central areas especially. It's the two shots from Tampanese Rovers so far, but uh, in very good control of this one at the moment anyway. Here's Hakimi. Things can change very quickly. Saifullah. Yase, good hold up play. Excellent from Yase Hanapi. Finding Faris. So a stray arm there. Joel Chu. The effort going just wide. Well, Kyoga Nakamura was just able to spin away yeah. here from his marker, but there was an outstretched arm perhaps. Yeah, I think yeah, there was some form of contact there with his arm through to, I think, uh, was it Shafiq Hilmi? That's right, yeah. Shafiq Hilmi. Quite surprised that the, the referee didn't see that. Decent amount of support as well out here, General Massa. I think they, they, they have uh, two matches to look out for. Yeah. Absolutely right. The uh, final coming up after this uh, third place playoff match between the defending champions, Haugang United, and the Lion City Sailors. Kickoff of that one from uh, 8 pm. Coverage beginning from 7 30 pm. Header in midfield by Saifola. Moise. 
to Shafiq. Gets the return from Hakimi. Good call from the referee, Clarence. It's here's he. Goes back to Shafiq. Off the post. Well, that should give DPMM some encouragement. The strength of Boris Kapitovic causing all sorts of issues. Has to wait for support to arrive. That's going to take the momentum out of that move for Tampanese. And Quay easily passed two DPMM players <laughs> there. DPMM players no there. challenge put in. It's too easy. Like, uh, why did they, they were not there at all. Let's look at the replay again. And the ball just fell straight nicely to Shafiq with a snapshot hitting the post. I think caught me off guard as well. First real chance for DPMM in the Tampanese uh, penalty box. Uh, Tampanese half, we haven't seen them progress into Tampanese half of the pitch for 20 minutes. <laughs> a long time in this match. Coming close with that effort. Yasir. It's well defended. Uh, stepping across there was uh, Muiz, Abdul Muiz Sisa. But you, you get what Yasi wanted to do. He wanted to disguise that cross and play it right into his running path. Again, uh, Abdul Mui is being firm, strong, allowing that ball to just roll through for a goal kick. I think uh, Brunei DPMM. It's one of the, f maybe one of the few clubs that I see that don't really do any build-ups at all from goal kick. Like in modern football, everybody's getting back uh, and trying to play out from the back. But you don't get that from the PMM, they just punt it straight. That's Forrest. Forrest. Still Forrest. That's a good save from Namorski. Had to get a hand to it. Touched it on to the crossbar. Irfan Najib rising above Hakimi. Possession back with Tampanese again. How long can the PMM last trying to defend all the way? They need to, I mean, they, I'm sure they want to win and they need to be more, a bit more adventurous as well. Zawanku Fakaradzi trying to release Hakimi. He was well positioned there, Shuya Yamashita. And he knew exactly where yeah. the pass was going. You don't have too many options going forward as well. It's just Hakimi Yazid essentially trying to work his way into the yeah. channels. Yeah. I think they're playing with him up front with five in mid midfield. And if you look at the midfield players, uh, they don't look like they are like Azwan Ali who, who likes to venture forward. Most of them are very defensive. So you have that lack of support coming from midfield with DPMM. And, uh, I think it shows in the game. They, they, they are not creating anything. They are not having late runs from anyone in midfield. That's Joel Chu. Yes, sir. On to Glenn Quay. Kapitovic. Back to Yasir. Saifula. Okamura. Here's Adam Rivdi. With the cross. Martinez was there. Lovely football from Tampanese. Nakamura. Touched on to Forrest. And that's too. Far too easy for Tampanese Rovers with yeah. Forrest Ramley getting his fourth goal of the Singapore Cup. A very calm uh, in the penalty box from Yasi Hanafi. I think uh, I was expecting Yak Nakamura to take that shot actually but a good presence of mind to be aware that okay let's try to play the ball forward because we have numbers up front. 
Yasi Hanafi playing it to space for Faris, opening his body up, realizing that uh, Namowski is coming off his line, just hitting it above him to score his fourth goal for the Singapore Cup. Again, it's a similar goal. DPMM carved open, sliced open. Yeah, beautiful football being played by Tampanese yeah. Rovers. And how smart was that touch from yeah, Yasir Hanapi yeah, as well? Yeah, exactly. I think it, as a real striker would just control and, and then take that shot. Uh, maybe a little bit more selfish. Uh, this uh, could get pretty ugly for DPMM. Yeah, it's too easy. It's just too easy for uh, Tampanese Rovers. Just toying with them in front of goal. Just inviting them to come forward. And the moment they get out of position, uh, Tampanese just play that to the exact spot that they vacated. Fakaradzi. Farsha no going to try and make something happen from midfield. But it, it looks like Farsha no is playing a bit deeper, uh, in, right in front of the defense. And uh, I think f if you look at all the midfield players that DPMM have, he's the only one who likes to bomb forward. Yeah. Who likes to make that run and you know get that support for for Hakim Hakimi Yazid. Would it make a little bit more sense yeah, then to try yeah, and push him further exactly. forward? Yeah. I mean, you are being carved apart even when he's there. Like Mike Trell, you try and push him forward and get, be on the front foot rather than defending all the way. You're in Raputra. And he's putting his foot through it, going all the way out for a goal kick. Kamura. Skupitovic. Yes, here. Faris. Joel Chu. Got his head up very early on. Exactly what he was going to do. Played first time. It's cool and calm from Farshad No. And good strength as well to hold off Saifullah initially. He wasn't really happy with his teammates there. Looking for support, looking for somebody to just step away from a marker and ask for the ball. That's Joel Chu. Safe for that. Kapitovic. Again on the turn, Boris Kapitovic. He just perhaps rushed his final effort. I haven't seen that one in a while from Boris Kapitovic. He's trying to just, you know, hold on and roll away and letting the ball run through. And this is what he's capable of. And he was off balance when he took that shot. The ball was rising the moment he left his left boot. They want the free kick this time. They are going to get it. It's an Irfan on Hakimi. One of the very few chances that DPMM might have today is leaning against uh, Hakimi Yazid. Well, these are, especially for a side, is, is struggling yeah. to string phases of play together, attacking phases of play together, set piece situations. Yeah. And they have Hakimi, yeah. who's pretty good yeah, pretty with good shooting at, from yeah. this sort of range. They need the, to be further up of the field to try to win a corner kick or to try to win a free kick in and out in uh, and around the box for this kind of situations 
probably going to go for goal. Hakimi finds the wall instead. That's Joel Chu. Fakaradzi has stayed down for DPMM. Play continues. Faris. if he was just uh, thinking about whether to put it out of play so that Fakaradzi could receive some treatment he's uh, back up he's back involved in the action is Fakaradzi bit of it's just uh, crowded out there by Martinez and Yura in the put up I think Hakimi was expecting Thing that run from Fasha no and again losing possession too easily and uh, now DPMM is back defending been too comfortable for Tampines Rovers uh, in, in the first 36 minutes here I don't think the two center backs are even sweating at this point of time and they really haven't had too much to do especially yeah. Yamashita yeah we're often seeing Hakimi as he playing on in front of the deep yeah, side exactly. of the pitch. And I just keep it moving so well. I mean, this is so slick from Dampanese Rovers. Have a look at that. And DPMM is, uh, I think they know that Dampanese likes to, to be in this situation where they are controlling possession, they are finding that space to go forward. Uh, you have to be uh, aggressive in, in defending, especially when they are coming towards your maybe midfield area and all that. But you can't be naive in the sense where you're you're going to be out of position all the time, and that's where Tampines likes to be to be at to penetrate through. That's Nakamura tried to append it into the far corner of the goal. Now Moski was there stretching out to reach it to make the save. Again, look at where the players are. He's allowed to be doing this, I think, for the second or third time in the game. Now, that DPMM midfield is just all over the place. I mean, when, when you look at score lines, you often talk about yeah. defending, and the defense gets a lot of yeah. flack for it. But this is what we talk about when you're analyzing it, and you actually say defending is a team effort. Yeah, exactly. That defense is not being protected at all. I mean, if you look at the players, I mean, Farhan, seasoned players as well they are not like uh, you know, uh, non first teamers trying to get some minutes under their belt they're fun with the head up and uh, you know Fasha no even uh, Fakurazi they have had multiple appearances in, in, in the league as well Akopitovic almost in there recovery from Muiz Takes the contact, wins the free kick, eases the pressure on his side. Nice knockdown from Shoya Mashita. Oh, would there have been a shout for handball there? Might Just be. the first one as Muiz yeah. goes in. Yeah. Hey, he's got his yeah, left yeah, arm. His left arm. I think mean, there was some intent to just put the arm out, the elbow out. In uh, un <laughs> yeah, you, you look at that. <laughs> There must be something there to make a, a different call for the referee. I, I think it's one of those situations, Hide, where if you you play the game or if you know the yeah, game, yeah, yeah. you know exactly what a player yeah, is exactly. intending in yeah, those exactly. situations. <laughs> Although intent doesn't come into it until the loss of the game, of course, but I mean, yeah, it's the unspoken. Yeah. We sort of know what players are, are looking to try and yeah. do. <laughs> I think that's exactly what they are looking at. They are looking at a potential penalty for handball. Check uh, complete. No handball? No, nope, no handball. <laughs> okay. Check complete. But I, uh, but I think we, yeah. we picked it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun with the header. 
Unable to control under pressure there. Was uh, Yasir Napi. It's Fakaradzi being crowded out by purple shirts. Shimashita. He wants a corner, Hanif Farhan. Almost looked like he nutmegged Yamashita there. <laughs> I think Yamashita nutmegged himself. <laughs> <laughs> Good call from the referee. So just going back to that earlier check yeah. for potential handball, it's, uh, it was noticed by the VAR. Uh, but they also noticed an offside in the attacking phase of play. Oh, okay. That's Glenn Quay. Finally, seeing a bit of closing down and a bit yeah. of intensity yeah. in that yeah, exactly. uh, closing down there from Yura and Draputra. Is he done? Right, here's he. Hangs on to it for his side. Miss Fakaradzi. At times, having to almost play an advanced midfield role, Awanku Fakaradzi. But more used to see him, yeah. him uh, in that right wing back position for DPMM. Or right back position. It's, if you look at certain situations where he has, he has to be just behind Hakimi Yazid because there wasn't just any support from the three central players for DPMM. Well, it's been that sort of knockout stage uh, campaign for DPMM. They struggled against Haogang as well in an attacking sense in both uh, those matches in the semi-final. But they looked really good in the group. Yeah. I think uh, you know, things change after five weeks yeah. of uh, no games, no matches. And we have to say they are seriously missing Voronkov yeah. and Aswan Ali. Aswan Ali yeah. And those two are critical in how they play. I think they, they, they have, uh, or rather they have a, a lack in quality up front with the players in, in, on the bench as well. If you look at the situation that they are facing, not a lot of younger players and not a lot of options in the, in the squad as well. It is a, a side that's getting on quite a bit in terms of the age profile you look at the bench Aswan Saleh is 35 Hendra Azam is 35 Abdul Azizi Rahman who started at second leg against Haogang 36 Najib Tarif is 35 Helmi Zambin 36 Razimi Ramli 33 Jaime Nyaring goalkeeper is 25 we have Eddie Izzat 20 Nazaruddin Ismail 24 I think we, we are going to see a different batch of players hopefully next season with all these these uh, seasoned veterans being being phased out, well, yeah, let's wait and see what happens in terms of whether how they refresh yeah, the squad exactly. for, for for next season. You know, Penup's already mentioned that uh, there's going to be a new coach coming in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a check in progress right now for a uh, potential denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity offence. The official has indicated <laughs> that there will be... Is it the coming together there between Yamashita and uh, Hakimi Yazid? Looks pretty <laughs> innocuous, but uh, I might be having a look at it anyway. As of now, a minimum of two minutes to be added on. I mean, it would be... Uh, well, it's going to be an on-field review. Oh, wow. wow. Well, we <laughs> <get> <laughs> Nakamura is confused as well. well. We are going to get a closer look at that as well. The 
referee Clarence Liao going across for that uh, on-field review. Here's another look at it. He did you tell me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there was a check and he was... I, I don't think Hakimi Yazi was even looking to make that run forward. He has stopped his run because he realised that the ball has gone to his back rather than forward. It's behind him. Yeah, it's behind him. So there's no obvious goal scoring <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not even sure that this has to be reviewed. It's... It's behind yeah. the attacker. Yeah, yeah. Yes, there's a coming together. Yeah. And the most you award a free kick in that situation for yeah, potential the obstruction. But the ball was behind him, so I, I don't see how it can be an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. There we go. Yeah, I think there's no dispute. Common sense yeah. from the referee. Well done. Yeah. You happy with the decision yeah, as well? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's nothing really to say about it. It's there. I think when when the the Clarence or the referee was, you know, putting his fingers on his ear, I was like thinking, what is he looking? What is he? What are the VR team doing? Right? No, I think in, in their eyes, they probably thought it's worth an on-field review. No, no problem, I guess, recommending it. The referee has to go across and just have a look. He can decide for himself. Here's Irfan Najib. As we move on, <laughs> I mean, if you look at the situation here again, if Irfan Najib is allowed to dribble to the, the the penalty area of DPMM, something is hugely wrong, and something needs to be done. It's been that way the the whole first half. There's been no defensive protection <laughs> from that yeah. midfield. Yes, yeah, Anapi, the delivery, easy for Namowski. Too far forward for Boris in the end. I don't forget obvious goal scoring opportunity. I'm not even sure there was a goal scoring opportunity to be looked at. Anyway, correct call was made by the on field referee. And it is half time here at Jalan Besar. Tampanese Rovers well in control of this first half. A fantastic uh, performance from Tampanese Rovers. Well, I would say a disappointing performance from DPMM so far. Allowing Tampanese to take control and not putting up a good fight for the third and fourth placing. I think Tampanese scored two fantastic uh, team goals to take the 2 0 lead into the halftime and a lot of things for Andrew Penock to speak about to get something out of the game in the second half. Uh, Boris Kopitovic with the opener, scoring his fourth of the Singapore Cup campaign. Faris Ramli also getting his fourth of this campaign with the second for Tampanese Rovers, who are cruising along very nicely in this third place playoff with that two goal lead going into the half time break.
Welcome back to Jalan Besar Stadium. Tampines Rovers 2, Brunei DPMM nil in this uh, third place playoff in the 2023 Singapore Cup. It's been all Tampines Rovers in the first 45 minutes as we have a look at some of the numbers there. I mean, it just screams dominance, doesn't it? In terms of possession, in terms of number of chances, eight shots to two uh, by Tampines. And out of that, five shots on target, zero shots from DPMM on target, no corner kicks, no offsides. Uh, only one way in the first half and the score lines dub, uh, confirms it as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, cruising along, Tampanese Rovers. So let's have a look at uh, some of the highlights then from that first half. And Boris Kapitovic with this effort of a set-piece routine in the fifth minute. Well-worked uh, routine by Tampanese Rovers. It's coming short for his round lead, knocking it back. For that space, we vacated. And, uh, Boris Kopitovic scuffing a shot. And just five minutes after that effort, Boris Kopitovic would get the opening goal. Some neat interplay down the right-hand side. Good exchange of passes between Faris and Yase Hanapi. As Faris who picks up the assist with the cutback. Kopitovic with a simple finish in the end after some good approach play. But loving this uh, for, from Tampines Rovers. Easy one-touch play from three players here. Four including Adam Rivji for Boris Kopitovic. Good run from him as well. Get away from Hanif Amir and easily just using his left foot to touch in for the first goal. In the 16th minute, Glenn Quay found some bit of a mistake here by Yura Indraputra and tried to lay it on for Forrest Ramli. But it just wasn't to be for Tampanis. Fantastic ball through, but at the same time, Yura Indraputra making too much of a mistake there. Taking a bit too long for Glenn Quay to just decide what he wanted to do, had two options, chose Faris Ramli and denied that chance in the end. This would be uh, one of two shots from DPMM in that first half. Coming off the frame of the goal, obviously not a shot on target. From Shafiq Gilmi. Good shot from the young man, 17 years old, providing that spark that uh, DPMM needed. Yeah, Faris Ramli, again too easy for for him to just dribble past Abdul Moise on his left foot. Here again, you look at the situation over here. It's a bit of trickery coming to his left foot. Quite safe yeah, from quite Namoski, safe. though. Touched it onto the crossbar. Well, shortly after that, in the 31st minute, Faris Ramli would uh, make it too. You look at Yasi's behavior just before he received that pass. He's just stepping in inside to allow that passing lane to be made, to be created. And uh, while he was moving, definitely realized that Faris Ramli was in a better position than him. He's playing it to his running path. Faris Ramli chose to just, I wouldn't say dink, but you know, shoot it over oncoming goalkeeper. Kyoga Nakamura allowed to uh, just run through that midfield and we've seen that to be a real issue for DPMM in that first uh, half. It's too easy for uh, Nakamura here, just running through, trying to ban it over, or rather ban it to the far post. Good save, Ronomowski. So 45 more minutes at least of football to come from this uh, Tampanese Rovers game against uh, Brunei DPMM. But after that, we will have the Lion City Sailors against Haugang United in the main event, the final of the 2023 Singapore Cup. Kickoff at 8 p.m. Coverage beginning from 7:30 p.m. We'll go away for another quick break and when we come back, we will have the second half of this one.
We're back live here at Jolomasa Stadium. This third place playoff in the Singapore Cup 2023 between Tampanese Rovers and Brunei DPMM. And it's Tampanese Rovers with a very comfortable 2 0 lead at the moment. Boris Kopitovic with the opening goal, scoring his fourth of the Singapore Cup campaign. Faris Ramli getting the second, also scoring his fourth of the season's Singapore Cup. Hidekamis is still with me in the commentary position as we get ready for the second 45. What can we perhaps see from DPMM in this second half? Listen, I know it's incredibly difficult. Penok doesn't have too much in the way of options as well, but we have to hope we see some sort of reaction. Yeah, I think we need some reaction from the central players, especially in midfield, just to be present at where they're supposed to be, do what they're just supposed to do in terms of defending, be compact. You know, the moment somebody gets into their zone, starts defending a bit more intelligently, aggressive at the right time, and at the same time, not allowing anybody to just drive the ball through or run the ball through, especially in the centre. I think they haven't been doing that at all in the first half. Um, in attacks, it has been difficult for DPMM. It's difficult to change things as well because the quality of the players, the characteristics of the players are just not uh, ideal for, this, for the, the type of football that he wants to play uh, at this point of time. But, you know, they can try to be a bit more adventurous going forward, try to win those corner kicks, try to win those free kicks and eventually use that into their fa uh, get that into their favour rather than be defending the whole 45 minutes in the second half. It's also, I wonder if you agree with this, also a case of it being the last game of the year. Uh -huh. And do you think Penok might be tempted to tell his side, be brave, go for it? You know, it doesn't really matter if they, yeah. if they end up losing by a big scoreline, does it? No, I think for me, I still think that you have to be really, he has to be really smart, the team has to be really smart. They, they still have a chance to get two goals to try to win the game, but at the same time not to... Because Tampines, if you look at how Tampines have been playing in the first half, they can calf open the, any defence and if the BMM continues to defend like this, they can do it like in a split second yeah. as well. Like The quality up front has been fantastic. So they, they have to be careful with their defence, they have to be uh, a bit more adventurous up front and use their possession to, to be as efficient as they can. Right? I think that, that's been their football. Efficient, uh, direct and a bit more physical than whatever they've been showing in the first half. And if you're Gavin Lee, what would your message to your players be? Don't get complacent. I think that's the first thing that the, the, the players need to know that you know you still have 45 minutes to to try to get a win at this point of time nothing is, is, is certain nothing is confirmed yet they are in good positions but let's try to get another goal to be more comfortable and then uh, you know to do your normal stuff you know going forward try to play the football that you've been playing especially in your first half and never forget about your defending responsibilities well, Tampanese uh a bit heartbreak in the Singapore Cup last season, losing to uh, Haugang United. Christian Krajcek hat trick, a special moment for for Krajcek. Haugang in action later on against the Lion City Sailors. And they have that silver medal from last season, headed towards the bronze. The last time Tampanese finished third in the Singapore Cup was 2008. They beat the Young Lions on penalties that year. DPMM's last third place finish was uh, in 2015. Now, these clubs also met in the third place playoff match in the Singapore Cup in 2014, with DPMM beating Tampanese 2 1. Milan Mirdakovic opened the scoring for Tampanese before Rodrigo Tosi fired a double to give DPMM the win. Aswan Ali, Aswan Saleh, Hendra Azam among some of the DPMM <laughs> players to have featured that day. Mustafic was also, Mustafic Farudin was also in the team for Tampanese as well. He's on the bench as the uh, assistant coach at the Stags. Second half underway. Tampanese Rovers this time going from right to left on your screens, playing in the purple. DPMM going from left to right in the yellow and black. There's Glenn Quay. Joel Chu. Pitovic has that power and that turn. Mix up at the back. Well, flag has gone up for offside anyway. Looked like it was going to be a corner to Tempanis. Oh, I'm not sure which uh, 
play was offside. It could have been Joel, I think. With that run, receiving the pass from Boris. So Fuller touched on to Forrest. Cheetah and Saifula. Well, that's the thing with Tampanese as well. They are just so confident in possession. They're quite happy to play under pressure, yeah. draw that press yeah. for playing it around you or through you. It's much better defending from DPMM though. Martinez taking it away from Boris Kapitovic and then giving it back straight to Tampanese. Nakamura. Joel Chu. He's had a good season, Joel Chu, for Tampanese Rovers. Yeah. I think when he came back from Young Lions, uh, I think a lot of trust has been given to him by Gavin Lee. And he understands what uh, Joel can do. And I think the team the style of play suits him as well. He's not really much of a physical player. So he needs the ball on his feet and he's comfortable with it. And he, he's very good at that pocket of space again, especially coming in from the left hand side. And he has, I think, uh, had, has a few assists and goals as well. That's right. Local in terms of the assist numbers. Probably the next thing you'll be looking at from Joel Chu is to add more goals to yeah. his game. I mean, he has had the national team call up as well this, this year, so it has been a good year for him. Hanif Farhan into Hakimi. Fakarazi. Hanif Farhan into Hakimi. Well, they know he's dangerous. Quick to try and close him down. Yes, Indra Indraputra. Flag has gone up. Offside, Angel Martinez just coming back from an offside position. One of the few times that uh, the PMM has had the possession of the ball for more than 15 seconds in the game today. Yeah, they have really struggled in that department. Stroll two. Good bit of movement off the ball. Just to drift away from Farshad Noor. Bring out the best of passes into Glen Quay. Najib, another good header. He's pretty strong in the air as well, Irfan Najib. That's Farshad Noor. Moves to DPMM in the mid season window, replace uh, Josip Balic. But has been a good addition, especially in midfield where he provides that, that bite, that steel. And uh, I think he has a few goals uh, under his belt this season as well. Very aggressive, very competitive. Well, he's got uh, three goals in the Singapore Cup. He's DPM top scorer in this competition. Afghanistan International. There he is. Here's 
Virendra Putra. And sloppy from Hakimi Yazid. It does look like uh, at times Hakimi is just dropping off those attacking areas, trying to link the play in midfield, in possession. There has been a few uh, position changes, I think, especially at the start of the second half. Hakimi started on the right. I mean, he's up front at this point of time, but I think the last six minutes has been him on the right hand side trying to create something there. It's Joel Chu. Glenn Quay just drifted in field. Good interception from Joel Chu. That's good to see. A defensive attitude from Tampanese Rovers yeah. is still there. Yeah, well, they know the game is not over yet. I think they have to be clear up in their mind that it still needs to be won. And you allow DPMM to come into the game, they will. Strong challenge by Saifullah. It's been a good move for his career, Saifullah. Yeah. Going yep. away from uh, Laran City Sailors to back to Tampanese Rovers. Well, he has had to buy some time to get his space and his spot in the first 11, but I think he has done really well. Kept moving away from like, the sailors getting more regular game time I think it's difficult for him yeah. to, to get that in the LCS team and I think uh, the, the playing profile of the Tampa Rovers suits him as well I think uh, again he's not much of a physical player he likes the ball to be at his feet he likes to play football so I think a team like Tampa Rovers would suit him really really well well, he saw lots of action when the league still had that uh, under-23 quarter of three players. Here's Kopitovic. I think the whistle had gone for a handball from Boris Kopitovic. I think Boris uh, not really happy with that decision. Ball here over the top. I think Hanif Amir had to... I think definitely ball hit his arm, Boris. But Anif could have dealt with that so much better knowing that uh, Boris was coming on his left side. Put it on by Hakimi. Cleared away by Irfan. And one for Kapitovic to chase. Anif did all right under pressure. Managed to get enough of a touch on that to Martinez Nakamura Saifula and 20 appearances for the Lancity Sailors in the 2021 season all of them were starts 11 in the year shortened 2020 season as well all of those were starts as well and then last year just 747 minutes 16 appearances just 9 starts for Saifula and the Lancity Sailors Bit more league minutes with Tampanese Rovers this season. 887. 21 appearances, 9 starts as uh, yes, it goes down. Uh, obviously, he benefited from the under-23 rule previously, but uh, I think... Uh, if you look at quality as well, I mean, he's uh, no doubt that he's a good player, but it's difficult for him to see many plays against like a team in in LCS where Diego Lopez or, or I think at that time Song was still there. So it's difficult for him to get that space if he stayed if he has stayed on because he's no more an under 23 player. Uh, good move for him, and uh, at the same time, Tampines has benefited tremendously. Yeah, you've seen even someone like uh, Amirul Adli, for example, yeah. move yeah, away move from Lan City Sailors to Geylang, be an important player for them. And also seeing regular minutes. And for him, especially Amirul Adli, he wants to be in a national setup, right? So he has to be playing regularly to get that minutes and to be sharp. 
that's Farsha no he just stayed down he connected with uh, Faris on the follow through it was actually really good defensive work from uh, Faris Ramli he was tracking back Changes coming up. It's going to be two changes for DPMM. Number nine, Abdul Azizi Rahman, the 36 year old, is coming on. Number 18, Razimi Ramli, is also coming on. Here's the. is off. And the other player going off is uh, Awanku Fakarazi. Two changes for DPMM there. Well, we have a bit of uh, energy and a lot of uh, robustness from the number nine, Abdul Azizi. But again, it depends on how much support that uh, DPMM can provide him from the midfield line. Kimi. Okay, done well there, DPMM, just to surround Irfan Najib. Farshad no. Good turn. There's Razimi looking to make an immediate impact. Too many goals on the pitch at the moment. Zimi Ramli hasn't scored yet in the cup and uh, no goals in the SPL this season for Azimi. 17 appearances, three of them starts. Yet to find the back of the net. Let's look at this uh, action here. It's difficult to tell actually whether there was any contact between Abdul Muiz and uh, Faris Ramli for that tackle. Abdul Azizi on there as well, yet to score in this cup campaign. Just two goals in 18 appearances. For Abdul Azizi in the league this season. Yeah, say with the delivery. Oh, what a chance oh, wow. for Irfan Najib. Flag it stayed down as well. Irfan Najib ghosting in at the far post here. Yeah. Good ball by Yasi Hanafi. The final contact was uh, straight to the ground and ball in the end bubbled up for a goal kick. Big chance for Irfan Najib. Is Irfan should have made it uh, three 0 with that effort. Half an hour to go in this uh, third place playoff between Tampanese and DPMM. As yet, no real uh, issues for Tampanese Rovers, nothing really to be concerned about in terms of uh, DPMM's threat going forward. Tampanese the, looking the likely of the two sides to go on and actually get the next goal. Referee playing the advantage. Joel Chu is uh, still down. Nakamura <laughs> just enjoying himself a little bit too much yeah, I think uh, the game needs something now to just spark things to life again I think the first half or the second half has been quite uh, I would say a bore there's not much action going forward 
like uh, Hakim Yazi caught Joel Chu in his ankle pretty late getting a yellow card for that challenge it's confirmation of that booking for Hakimi and imagine a bit of frustration as well quite a lot of frustration for Hakimi Yazid well not much difference here after 15 minutes in the second half for DPMM going forward still lacking in ideas still not much uh, improvement in, in quality and in the gameplay they have shown Well, this has uh, pretty much been the pattern of the match. Japanese with lots of possession, lots of control. Nice fresh legs of uh, Abdul Azizi. Oman trying to uh, just be quick to close down on Shazwan. And Shazwan Buhari has, has really had nothing much to do in goal for Tampanese Rovers. Bit of a wild challenge in midfield. There's Muiz. Shrugs off Saifullah, no issue. That's Abdul Azizi. It's lacking that quality at the moment, DPMM. Oh, it's, it's, it's the, the basic actions there we're looking for here. Better control, better pass, better timing of pass. It's been sorely lacking in the DPMM team. Especially today. It's harsh, I know, with a step over, but he's going the wrong way. <laughs> we made it into the final in 2018 DPMM. Challenges uh, starting to come in now on these Tampanese Rovers players. Well, two consecutive late challenges, one by Hanif and the other one, the first one by Shafiq. The second one has actually <laughs> had a bit of fire in it. Yeah, I think it's a, it, it's a real sense of frustration. They're not getting anywhere near these Tampanese players as uh, DBMM look to make another change. It's uh, Eddie Sharol Izat, a 20 year old. Coming on for Shafiq Hilmi, a 17 year old. Martinez having to deal with it, and he does. First touch there from uh, Eddie Izat. This time it's uh, Hanif Farhan who gets taken down by Saifullah. Yeah, Hanif is blocking the ball and screening the ball away, using his frame really well to win a free kick. Eddie Sharol is at making his uh, third appearance in this uh, Singapore Cup campaign played five times in the league this season. There's Hakimi. Yura Indra Putra cross into the area over the head of Abdul Azizi. Yasir Napi. Just to keep a hold of that it brilliantly at one point it just looked like uh, physically he was going to lose out to Farshad Saifullah so 
Nice Faris. It's well defended by Muiz. Showed him inside and then uh, Faris accepted the invitation. Muiz straight away blocking off that run. That wasn't very good. Adam Reef D. It's a touch of cramp, perhaps. A young man who hasn't played too much football. I think he hasn't started a match for a really long time, especially when he was young in Young Lions. I don't remember him starting games consecutively. Might have a few starts here and there, but not so much when he was there in Young Lions. Well, his, his last start in the league for the Young Lions was in uh, April this year, 15th of April. That was his last start. And then uh, he moved to Tampanese Rovers, made just two appearances. Moved back to Tampanese Rovers, I should say. <laughs> just two appearances rest of the season this one his fifth appearance in the cup and his uh, first start in this competition it's Glenn Quay gets to it finds Yasser <laughs> looked a little bit <laughs> naughty there from uh, Yura Indraputra I think that's the point that Yasser Nabi was trying to make if he wasn't uh, interested, Martinez. Farsha Noor. Oh, decent shape on that. Ooh, oh, wow. <laughs> Close to being an own goal. Shuya Yamashita. I don't think he had control of that touch. Just an outstretched leg. I think that was the first time in the second half where something got off. Some, something happened in, in the game that got me off my my seat a little and it came from a mistake from Yamashita but it's that quality of yeah. the ball though yeah. from, from far shot no wasn't it that, that caused the problem for Yamashita and that Tampani's back line change here Keegan Pang on for Adam Rifdi also seeing Firdaus Kazman on for Joel Chu a good take from Charles One. Considering that he's not had much yeah, to do. Exactly. Good take. Uh, I think with this change as well, Fidel Skarsman should be playing in front of the defense, pushing Kyoga up, where maybe he could provide a bit more life in, in the second half. Run by Saifula. That's right. Out to Glenn Quay. Back to Saifula. Striving right through yeah. midfield. And that was the first time in the second half. So <laughs> they must have done something right, DPMM, to minimize that situation from happening. Well, you see, they are trying to yeah. get closer yeah, to yeah. the Tampanese Rovers midfielders in the second half. It's free for all, really, in the first. Yeah, they are pushing it forward. They, their players are trying to press higher. They are trying to defend higher up the pitch. But the moment the, at a time where they are supposed to be trying to win the ball rather than just being passive further up, Tampanese has already gone past them. So that's the situation now where DPMM needs to recognize, okay, let's push up, let's try to win the ball, but let's try to be aggressive as well when we are defending up front. There's uh, two different situations where you're standing beside your opponent rather than you know, trying to get a tackle in. It's a bit more difficult for Tampanese to find that, that time to decide what they need to do with the ball when that happens. There's Gavin Lee looking on. This one is 109th match in charge of Tampanese Rovers as their head coach officially named as their head coach in uh, January of 2020 but he was there when they won yep. the cup in 2019 19, yeah. and there was a lot of talk that essentially it was his team with yep, definitely he was Kadeya, team, yeah, yeah. being named as a head coach because of uh, licensing requirements yeah. 
he was working with the team day in day out he was on the training page designing training sessions delivering and, and conducting those training sessions as well so i mean you have to give credit to to him he was the main man for the Tempest Rover since 2019 yeah he was uh, an assistant to Jürgen Raab as well at Tampines. He was also an assistant at Warriors FC, Alexander Weaver. He started out his career as a match analyst for yeah. Warriors. He was brought in by Alex Weaver. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Didn't play professionally, Gavin Lee, but he played in the uh, SFL, what is known as the SFL now. Yep, yep. And I think he, he played in the national youth age groups, if I'm not wrong. It's Glenn Quay. And Gavin Lee was uh, a player with the Singapore Cricket Club. I wonder what is next for Adrian Pennock as well. Well, he has spent five years, three years, four years out of uh, his his uh, country. I mean, the last thing I've heard was uh, he misses home and he wants to get back. To his family. Home, looking for that pass through. Sorry, you just have to yeah, no worries. cut you off there. He did. Yeah, so he wants to go back and spend time with his family. Does he? Yeah. That's yeah. what you've heard anyway. Nice ball being thread through from Fasha No. Exactly towards the end. Good timing from Shazan Buhari. A little bit of uh, magic spray coming on. And some uh, cold water as well on that ankle for Nakamura. Well, coming to the closing stages of the season for both these sides. Thumbs up there, which is good to see. Being given by the Tampanese physio to the bench. Nakamura is okay, fit to continue. Crowd starting to build up nicely of the uh, final between the Lion City Sailors and Haugang United. Expecting a good strong crowd. Rockers atmosphere as well for that final. That should be a good game as well. Two good quality teams. Similar styles now, I think. Especially in the last few games, Chelsea is having to prepare themselves with ACL games. Good quality opponent. Different style of play from what they want to, to achieve. But I think they have done that really well against Tampines Rovers. That's Yura Indraputra. Again, going to try and get forward down this right-hand side. Hakimi onto the nutmeg. <laughs> they weren't letting him go anywhere there. Kapitovic and Yasir. A bit of a cheeky smile from Hakimi Yazid. Pretty much that's all he could have done in that situation. Trying to get away from these two players and win a foul in the end. Actually, was going away from <laughs> Tampanese's goal, and now he's done well to win the free kick. That puts uh, this Tampanese defence under a little bit of pressure. They desperately need a goal. No, it's not just DPMM that need a goal, this game needs a goal. <laughs> I think the crowd has been pretty restless as well. It needs a spark yep. from somewhere. From Saifula, just bounced up off the turf and onto his arm. Well, the free kick coming nearer towards the penalty box now. Nobody was really claiming for that. Was a chance. 
Ane Famir with the last touch. Martinez was there as well. Give a thumbs up. Let's have a closer look at that. Yeah, it was Hanif. Hanif Famir. He got ahead of his opponent in the end. I think he didn't manage to settle himself and find the right contact point in the end, needing it out for a goal kick. Came off the post as well. I think he just shaved the uh, side of the post. Yeah. The post, yeah. And, and talk that Japanese with the. Uh, well, he's been given a bit of a warning here. And they try and keep it focused defensively. If that had gone in, would have made it very interesting, interesting for us. Yeah. This is Keegan Pang. Kamura out to Irfan Najib. It's Keegan Pang, 17 year old. He's put Irfan Najib under a little bit of pressure. Hane Farhan, still with Hane Farhan. Charles not really happy with his defense, losing possession right in the middle of the playing area. Only Farhan decided to take that shot in the end. It's got to be better than that to try to beat Charles Wan. He's had a solid season for DPMM yeah. in midfield, yeah. hasn't he, Hane Farhan? 23 year old, 23 appearances in the league, 21 of them were starts. Well, he's one of the few, few players who have been really reliable and dependable as well. Could play in the left side of defence when needed, but uh, provided that security and that biting midfield for DPM every season. Fuller. It's uh, taken on that feeling of uh, a friendly match now with the uh, pace of the game. Well, it suits uh, Tampanese Rovers. They are 2 0 up, they are comfortable. Well, you mentioned that uh, Gavin Lee will not want to see any complacency from his side. Are we starting to see a little bit of that creeping into? Tampanese's game in the closing stages of this one. Shazwan putting Yamashita yeah. in some trouble. The, the quality of those passes now are not up to the standard where Tampanese should be playing at. Ooh, that momentum coming together between those two players. Abdul Azizi is the player just going to try and close down. Oh, Kimi. He's worked hard. He's on an individual level has had a very good campaign. A fantastic campaign from, from him. I think he won the young player of the year as well. Was he? Oh, he was in the team of the year, sorry. My apologies for that. But uh, he was nominated for the Young Player of the Year. One of the few bright sparks for DPMM this yeah, season. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he was nominated for that Young Player of the Year award, Hakimi. That award going to Seyakunori, Galbrecht Singata. Kimi making it into the SPL team of the year. Well deserved as well. I think uh, pretty good season, goals, assist. Uh, he made DPMM more exciting to watch. Hassan Farhan 
Not giving up on it. That's a good ball into Abdul Azizi. Fantastic tackle from Choya Yamashita. It's the last minute putting his feet across to block that pass or that, that shot rather Azizi here perfect position to try to get that one elusive goal to start off something for DPMM as you said Roshan F. Tampani has been complacent they're losing another uh, another round of possession in the central areas again. This so will be taken by Eddie Izzat. Oh, not a bad delivery from Eddie Izzat. That's Abdul Azizi in on the end of that. Well, two chances in two minutes for Azizi. This time from the corner kick, so much closer to the goal as well. Nobody was really marking him, jumping together with him. I think a glancing header would have done that trick. Completely, Completely missed time the header. Yeah. Oh, he's not prolific at this level. Incredibly nothing on target in this match so far for DPMM. Change for Tampanese. Side Fidaus Hassan on for Saiful Akbar. So perhaps uh, Kevin is just sensing that there might be a bit of tiredness in that Tampanese midfield. We got Saif Fidaus, who's a workhorse. Yeah, I think uh, Saif Fidaus will bring a bit more balance. Not much of, I mean, not as technical as Saiful going forward, but providing that that uh, cover and, and balance that. Tampanese needs for the last maybe 10 minutes of the game. For them, just a matter of trying to see this one out. Yeah. To secure third place. And, and, and really, it's not Tampanese's fault that the uh, pace and the tempo has dropped. Yeah. It's exactly. something that absolutely suits them because they want to control this. Yeah. It's exactly. DPMM who have to force yeah. the issue. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you know that you need to try and get something out of the game. You need to be more adventurous, you need to be more in, to be more aggressive, play with more intensity, but the second half has been the same. It's been exactly the same like in the first. That's Hakimi having to drop very deep. Try and receive. Martinez. Side for those. Fridaos Kasman Nakamura Glenn Quay It's a bit of a nudge in the back there from uh, Nazimi oh. <laughs> Good bit of play from Yura Putra. Just popped it around the corner And they'll slow it down again, Tampanese. There's so much space in midfield. Nakamura easily passed one. Kyoga Nakamura. Just couldn't quite get the whip on this effort. Like the, the whole uh, line, defensive line for DPMM didn't really push up to force that space to be constricted. Nakamura just now moving forward in a position where I think he wants to be more <laughs> and uh, trying to gain more control of the game up front Good work here from the substitute That's Razimi Razimi into the box Oh, oh. late challenge there from Irfan <laughs> Referee was right there and He didn't see anything wrong This will be looked at in the background I am sure Looked like a lunge there from Irfan Najib. I'm surprised that DPMM aren't uh, making yeah, nobody was calling more for of it. a fuss. Yeah. Yeah. 
Energetic run from Razimi Ramli. He continues for the moment here as far as Ramli. But EPMM is defending too deep now. They are not going up at all. It's Keegan Pal. Confidence shown by the uh, young player. Cool work trying to take on those uh, 1v1 situations here. Oh. oh wow, he didn't get the ball at all. Irfan Najib. <laughs> uh, is there gonna be a check? Wow, well I, it, there well, let's see if, if uh player is allowed to continue <laughs> first and then I'll give you the update. It, it didn't look like no. Irfan got anywhere near yeah. the ball with that challenge. Yeah. So it looks like uh, play is going to be allowed to continue. This will be a restart. So that's it. That's done. No penalty is the decision <laughs> as that is uh, swung in. And the VAR apparently had a quick check on the penalty incident. And his view of it was that the defender got the ball. Well, uh, you can go and settle that with the uh, VAR once we're done here. He did. I'll leave you to it. Well, uh, the game has gone on. I think uh, there's nothing much to it anymore. Uh, certainly contact there. <laughs> Nakamura was <laughs> pulled down by Hakimi. And he's going to be in trouble here. It's a second yellow. Hakimi as he is off. I think he knows the moment he made that, <laughs> that challenge or that pull. Yeah, there's uh, absolutely no yeah. doubt about that. And he had two both arms across the chest of uh, Nakamura. Free has got uh, no choice in that situation but to produce another card and send Hakimi Yazid off. First uh, red card in Singapore football for Hakimi Yazid. Kapitovic Challenge from uh, Hanif Going For a corner to Tampanese Another 17 year old about to come on for Tampanese Rovers It's gone all the way through Kaylin Chong is standing by to come on. That's far shot, no. He's not letting him go anywhere, Saifid Al Sasan. It could work from Saifid There was a lot of uh, density there in that defending, uh, even at the 89th minute. And here is uh, Kaylin Chong coming on for. Faris Ramli and Glenn Quay is going to be coming off to be replaced by Sharul Sazali. Now this is a, a nice moment for Sharul Sazali who's had his injury issues. Back in action. Good to see him. The 25-year-old Sharul Sazali back on the pitch for Tampanese Rovers. First time we've seen him feature this year. Sharul Sazali. Good to have him back, affectionately, low, affectionately known as Stone. I think with his uh, to stone face. On that. I think with his stone face. I stone think. Stone face. Yeah. Wow. Okay. A well, face chiseled out of stone. Or? <laughs> we'll, we'll lacking emotions. I think. Lacking emotions. <laughs> okay. I'm sure he's delighted to be on. Very solid player as well. Here's Razimi. Oh, 
finally a corner kick for DPMM. A minimum of three minutes. We are about halfway through that. Taken short, far shot no. Nakamura not messing about with his clearance. Sends it long. That's one for Kill and Chong to go and chase. It's just uh, not being their day, DPMM. Tampanese Rovers, very professional performance. Happy with uh, the, uh, the result, obviously. I think uh, in terms of performance, they have uh, fizzled out in the second half. Just managed to contain DPMM, not allowing any opportunities again, being carved out. And uh, But then again, they haven't been so uh, good in terms of quality going forward as well in the second half for Tampines. Yeah, Farshad no, perhaps just uh, thinking that's going to be his last attempt at goal for the year. Why not? It is interesting as well, isn't it, with. Uh, number of players there's always concern or well intrigue as to whether you'll be seeing some of these players yeah, again yeah. next season especially the older ones I think uh, you look at I mean DPMM has a lot of players that maybe won't be featuring as well uh, it's full time here at Jalamasa Stadium Tampanese Rovers uh, picked up the bronze medal third place for them in the 2023 Singapore Cup Gavin Lee spoke about wanting to finish the year on a high and they have done that for Adrian Pennock his final match in charge of Brunei DPMM ends in defeat not a good uh, cup run for Adrian Pennock to end off his thing as the head coach of DPMM uh, but based on today's game companies were clearly the, the more dominant side tactically so much better as well two beautiful goals beautiful team goals by Tampanese enough to secure the win for the third place in the Singapore Cup wouldn't be too happy to be playing in this game but you know at the end of the day they are uh, I would say it, 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 uh, I would say it. here at the Jalambasa the final score is Stampanese Rovers 2 Brunei DPMM nil. You just see the players uh, walking off the pitch there. And just uh, those handshakes coming across. Nice to see a little bit of respect as well between the two sides going over to the respective benches. And uh, I mean, you mentioned Tampanese Rovers. Yes, they will want to, they will have wanted to have played in the final instead, having to settle for this third place playoff. But it's also a sign of them. Sort of showing that maturity in this yeah, game. Yeah. They were excellent in the first yeah. half and then they sort of saw it out in the second. They controlled things very well, I think, defensively in that sense. Okay, you could say DPMM weren't quite there, <laughs> but they still have can only play what's in front of them. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, you look at how they have been playing all season, this game really much suited how they wanted to end the season. Really easy, I think. They have been comfortable since minute one, not allowing anything from the DPMM side uh, to about anything for themselves. But if you look at the number of possessions they have had the whole season or the whole game, it's been fantastic. And then at the same time, managed to score two beautiful goals. I, I have to repeat that two really beautiful goal team goals that that uh, created this win for them. But if you look at the energy expansion as well, it's been really comfortable, it's really been really easy for, for the whole game.
Well, two really good goals, excellent work as a team with their play as well, and they uh, give their fans something to go off at the end of the season, something to shout about. A little bit of a happy ending there for uh, Tampanese Rovers at the end of the Singapore Cup campaign. We've enjoyed our coverage of this third place playoff. Remember, the final is coming up between Lion City Sailors and Haugang United. Kickoff in that one is at 8 p.m., but coverage begins from 7.30 with a build-up towards that match. We'll see you soon for the final of the 2023 Singapore Cup. Love in the trade like Skiller, baby. When you think about your